and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, my name is Guy and today we are continuing on the topic of toxic players. This is part two. That was suggested to me and co-written and collaborated with me through Dimitri Randall from TrueStoriesFakeWorlds.com. Now, Dimitri came up with the idea of doing this series of videos, these two videos on toxic players, principally outlining what they are. And if you haven't watched the previous video, I suggest you go and have a look at that first so you can understand where toxic players come from and who they are and how we can identify them. And in today, we're then going to look at how one then works with toxic players and how you move forward and if you are a toxic player how you can develop and grow and change that so without any delay let's kick off so talk with the gm that's step number one so let's say there's someone in your group who's a bully or who's an ignorer or who's a snark what do you do step one go to your gm and ask them what's your opinion on the player doesn't hurt anybody, it doesn't raise suspicions, it doesn't raise bile, it doesn't get anyone angry. What do you what do you think about about Jonathan? What, 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 what's your take? You listen to what the GM says. The GM might say, oh, I think he's fantastic. He really motivates the group. He keeps the group moving forward. He's absolutely wonderful. The GM might also say, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, God. He's not moving to another country at any point in the near future, is he? Can we move the group to another country in the near future without moving him necessarily? So if the GM is on your side, if they agree that there is an issue with this particular player, it gives you a base from which to work. And the reason why I say this is because if they say no, they think the player is absolutely wonderful, you need to seek understanding. You need to understand why do they feel that way? What are they seeing from that player? Because frequently it is our own insecurities, our own issues that cause us to find fault in others. And so sometimes we need that dash of cold water. Why, why do you think that, that, that uh, Sarah is so fantastically wonderful? Because she motivates the group, because she makes decisions, she actually causes stuff to move forward. Does that mean that the rest of us procrastinate? Are we perhaps delayers? Are we dullards? Are we we're not decisive enough? So you ask if you are the issue. Let the GM say, well, I don't want to say that you're the issue, but let's just say that Jonathan and Sarah have come to me with the same kind of question because they watched the same video. And they're not happy with you. You don't make decisions. You just sit back and whenever they ask you for your opinion, you don't give it. That might be an eye-opener. You think that those two are domineering bullies. Meanwhile, they're trying to get information out of you, but you're not giving it to them either. So that means that you're the timid one. You're the viewer, the non-participator. That would be an eye-opener, wouldn't it? So you need to learn how to get perspective on the entire situation. There's always more sides to the coin than it first meets the eye. So by asking and talking to your GM, you can get that. Now, if your GM says that, yes, they agree with you, the person is a problem or that you are a problem and they've managed to identify how that is, you then need to try and come up with a plan. All right, well, do we speak to this person? How do we do it? What do we do? What do we move forward on? Now, your GM is not necessarily going to have all of the answers to these kinds of questions. They might be as in the dark as you are. But if you work out a plan, if you say, okay, well, let's see. If they think I'm too timid and I think that they're too overbearing, let me try and be a little bit louder in next week's session. And GM, would you, would you do something to help me do that? So the GM can plan a session where your character is literally the center of attention. It's not difficult. And they can do that on the fly. So... That is what you should do. Step one, speak with the GM. Step two, obviously, is speak with the players. Now, you can do this on either way, but generally speaking, I find that the GM has a little bit more of a perspective on what's happening at the table because they're sitting there watching the interplay as it unfolds rather than being part of that interplay as it unfolds. So it gives them a better perspective. So I always go to the GM first. But once you've done that, you can go to the players. You then ask... Ask the player. So, so you can ask your other players, what do you think? Is it me? Is it them? How do we work forward? So get that information from them. But once you've, once you've done that, 
you then have to actually confront the player. Now, just saying, oh, it's the GM's problem. If the GM doesn't have a problem with that player, if the GM is okay with it, you can speak to the player. There's no rule saying that players are not allowed to address one another at the table, especially if you've spoken to the GM and they're happy for you to do that. So you can go to that other player and you can say, what's, what's your intention? Your character seems to want to focus on being in control all the time. You, you know, you, your character ignores our characters when coming up with plans. Your character's always bullying the GM or, you know, is always doing this. So ask their intentions, but don't be accusatory. Ask it from what you are seeing. Ask it from your perspective, from your side. Don't say you are bullying the GM. Say, you're, you, you seem to confront the GM a lot. Do you want to GM? You also need to identify the character versus the player. So some of those actions could be character-driven. The player could have decided to play a jerk-like character. The player could have decided to play a snarky, backbiting, condescending character. They absolutely could have. But if they didn't communicate it to you, it's going to come across as if the player is doing that rather than the character. So identify. Is it the character that's supposed to be doing this or is it the player who's doing this. Let me let me know, let me understand where the situation is. You then are allowed to voice your concern. Well, I feel that sometimes you don't listen to the rest of the players or sometimes you don't listen to me. And I want to know, is it because I have really stupid ideas or is it because I don't understand or is it because you don't think that I can contribute in a meaningful way? Ask them, voice your concern. If they are dismissive, if they maybe see your point, but they, well, you know, just, just speak louder. I'm very loud. You've got to talk louder than I've got to talk because I know that that's never going to happen. Ask for a change. Nothing wrong with that. You know, next episode, next, next episode, next uh, adventure, can, can we try that your character listens to my plan, listens to my character? Can we try that? Alternatively, you can give suggestions. If they go, wow, I really ignore you guys? I do that? How can I fix that? Well, you can come up with a plan. Every time you ignore us, all of us are going to raise our hands until you stop talking. And you'll know that you're ignoring us. And that will force you to step back and to stop and to give us a space. Or every time you're doing whatever it is that you do that we don't like or that we feel is a, is a negative behavior, we're going to throw our metal dice at you until eventually you stop. Whatever your solution, hopefully it's not a violent solution, but whatever your solution, you need to have a give and take. You need to realize and then you need to support. I didn't put that as a title here, but just imagine that there's a word here, support, support. So you need to support that player, if they're asking for help, if they are trying to change, you need to give them support and say, you know what, remember you used to just shout at us all the time, now you're letting things slide, I think you're doing a great job. Yeah, you slip up every now and again, but you are much better than you used to be. I've personally seen players change, I've personally changed both as a player and as a game master, and so anybody else can, because I'm one of the most obnoxious people you've ever met. So, the alternative, find another group. I hate finding other groups because you've got to build into them you've got to invest in them however sometimes it is for the best i have a personal motto i don't allow toxic people into my life and when people start getting toxic i cut them out i don't need it the planet is difficult enough as it is to have people who are constantly belittling you and tearing you down all the self-help videos out there on youtube say stand up for yourself Go and find another group. Oh, but it's so hard to find another group. Yes, a decade ago, it was difficult to find another group. 20 years ago, it was really difficult to find another group. Now, however, you have zero excuse. You really have zero excuse. Either if you are the toxic player and you realize that you are a toxic player, but you can't change, the rest of the party have kicked you out. You can go and find other groups. If you have kicked out the toxic player and you're looking for someone to join, or if you're a GM and you've kicked out all of your players because they're a bunch of snarky, backbiting rules lawyers, and you want to find another group, here are a whole bunch of options for you. There are always more players out there. If you live in the backwoods of a small town in northern Siberia, and you have internet, 
you can find players. You can find tables. How do we do that? We go online. I'm plugging my own little platform here, rpgtablefinder.com. I mentioned it in every video. Web Goblin tried to make it as the most efficient way of finding people out there. It's very easy. Facebook, there are dozens of groups. One shot Facebook group, this Facebook group for this role playing community, this Facebook. There are dozens of them. And there are little group Facebook group groups. There are subgroup, subgroup groups within Facebook. You can find them. Go out there and look. Your local stores, if South Africa can host a whole bunch of now retailing stores that sell role playing products, any country can do that. If your local store doesn't support, well, then there's MMOs. I've got several players, and I tried it once or twice, where you go and play in an MMO, and there's a whole bunch of free ones to play, so you don't have an excuse, where they do role-playing within the MMO. And then you can progress from there. You build up some information, you get some contacts, you build up some friends, and then you take it into a discord server or into a chat channel or into a wherever there is no barrier these days to find other people and of course this channel itself if you write a comment below hey i'm from albuquerque and i would love to i don't even know where albuquerque is i i would love to role play with six other people who all like to dress up as pandas when they role play i almost guarantee you maybe not on this channel no, I'm probably on this channel, actually. I love every single one of you. On this channel, you'll find people say, well, that sounds like a really cool idea. I like to dress up as a panda, too. Who cares what you like to do in your own space as long as you're having fun and you're not hurting anybody else? There are people out there. You can find them. These are the resources. And there's more. There's so many more. Roll20, Fantasy Grounds. All those spaces are there. Just step outside of your pond and you'll find that there's a much bigger ocean out there. Now, if you are a toxic player, what do you do? Well, I've been giving you advice throughout this video as we've been going along. So if you are a toxic player, if you realize that you are a toxic player, so if any of this sounds true for you, for you, ask why. Why do you do it? Why do you have to be right? Why do you have to ignore people and get your opinion out? Is it because it's the only time that you can possibly be right? Is it because you don't have a fantastic work life or a social life or a... You do have a fantastic social life. You have a bunch of people you role play with. But maybe it's that you don't have a good romantic life. Or who knows? There's thousands of armchair psychology reasons why you might have miserable life existence. And you have to express it in your role playing because that's the only space where you can do it. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. But that's wrong. And it's not going to win you any, any friends whatsoever. So you need to learn to change. Now, before you do that, I put these in the wrong way around, so swap them around. Apologize. It's difficult. It's very difficult. And I have done it. I have sat at a table with my friends and I have had to say, guys, I am sorry. I realize now i have been difficult i have railroaded i have really just done what i wanted to do and i didn't take you into consideration i'm really sorry i appreciate the fact that you're all still here and that you're willing to give me support i really thank you for it it is amazing what those words will do it's also amazing how difficult they are to say isn't it to apologize for something that you've personally done it's very very difficult but it can be done and it should be done to show that you are a person of character and upstanding value and that you are willing to change and then you need to ask for help hey every time i do this raise a hand throw a dice whatever i mean you know tap the table just let me know that i'm doing it because sometimes the stuff is all unconscious and it's just starting to spew out and to happen Become a reflective person where you reflect upon your actions. You reflect upon the way that you do things. Embrace supporting your fellow man, your fellow woman, your fellow panda. Embrace diversity at your table and let us all play together as one. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself getting a note saying, Gaming cancelled this week, but no one else is available to do anything because they're all busy role playing without you. Or find a different group where people appreciate your abilities. It's absolutely and utterly a viable solution. Now, a small group of toxic uh, people. If you've got a small group, uh, you don't have a big group of players. 
fixing it is better than leaving it always. So if you address it, if you raise it, if you accept it, if you own it, if you try to change it, fixing is always better. Talking is better than silinked. Now, silinked is an ancient Urdu word uh, from the early Meso Paleolithic era, which means that you must be silent and you must question the spelling of the English language. It was a very forward thinking uh, methodology of uh, culture at the time. So talking is better than silence. Silence festers, silence breeds anger and frustration and venom and uh, it just gets nasty. The benefits of a toxic free group. Happier space. More games, more players, better experiences. Everyone's happy. The story, the plot, the game can just flow and everyone can get in the zone and just go for it and have fun. It's really not worth putting up with a toxic player. It really is not worth it. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you say. It is not worth it. So make the decision. Go all the way back to part one if you're like me or go to part two which would be a better slide to finish on. I really have bungled those up. The idea here is that if you are a toxic player, you can change. If you are in a group that has a toxic player, you can help them change. You can support them to change. Or you can simply remove them and let somebody else take their place to improve your space. And you are investing time in this game. You are the one who's coming every single week to that table or to that online whatever. It is affecting you one way or another. And you owe it to yourself to change it. Because some of us, we only get one game a week. Some of us get 12 games a week. It's your space. It's your game. You have no obligations, no reasons to put up with toxic players. Anyway, Dimitri Randall, thank you for bringing this topic to my attention. I hope that you as a viewer found it interesting and exciting. And uh, if you do have suggestions for uh, videos moving forward, head on over to our Facebook group. It's freely accessible. It's out there. And you can add to the list. I've, I've posted up a, a, a topic saying, hey, give me ideas for videos because I want to give you what you want to know. I want to see what you guys want to see. I know what I want to see. Um, and it's, it's possibly different from what you want. So... Give us your voice and let us know what you think. Anyway, until we meet again, I wish you and yours the very happiest of toxic-free plays.